Hello and welcome to Traditional Painting the Digital Way. This is where I use digital painting apps to teach traditional painting techniques. In this video we're going to be starting a brand new series and I'm going to show you how to paint a bird in pastel. And I've been wanting to see how the newer pastel options work in Art Rage 6 and so we're going to be using Art Rage 6 for Windows. If you want to follow along traditionally, here is what I use for my traditional pastels. Pastels come in chalk form in the little square blocks or they come in pastel pencils and you can also use um, the blending stomp and a rubber blender that they use to smear the pastel around and a cloth or a old rag. They also come in a powdered form and these are called pan pastels and you can use a tool that has a little blending sponge with it and you can um, smudge out all the pastel on the paper with these little blending sponges. And so here's Art Rage 6 for Windows and you can go ahead and set your paper size and uh, you can also pick uh, the kind of paper that you want and here I want sort of a wa um, watercolor type paper and if I'm working traditionally I also use watercolor paper usually rough watercolor or cold press and sometimes I use arches cover paper you just want kind of a thick paper that has a lot of um, tooth to it which means it has a rough surface so that it will be able to accept a lot of layers of pastels. And then here I'm just kind of working on the uh, sketch. And so I went into the pencil category and I'm just using a soft tip pencil. And if you're following along traditionally, you can use a graphite pencil or a charcoal pencil, or you can just take one of the pastel pencils and just make a really light sketch. And I got a picture of a bird from uh, Pixabay and I think this is called a blue titmouse. And so I, I thought that it was really pretty and it had nice markings so I went ahead and um, got this picture to use and I like the pose here. And so I'm just kind of sketching the bird in and I'm not putting in a whole lot of details just kind of getting his shape and trying to get the the round look of his body and I'll have to go back in and resketch it after I add the background but I'm just kind of putting on um, the general details and then I wanted to go ahead and save that right quick and you'll see later on at the end of this video that it's a very good idea to save frequently but I went ahead and I did save the first sketch and then I went ahead and put another layer in and you want to do this so that you can keep your original sketch. And so <clears throat> I just went ahead and worked a little bit more on the um, details of the bird, just refining it a little bit more and um, trying to get a, a little bit of a better shape. And, and then I went ahead and merged those layers so that I could have that on a separate layer there, the sketch. Because you don't want to lose your original sketch. Now if you're following along traditionally, um, you might just use your graphite pencil and it usually stays a little bit better under the chalk pastels. And so then I wanted to go ahead and kind of add a blue background. So I was going through the the pastels just trying to get kind of an idea of the texture here and I use the hard out smudge on the palette knife because that's your blending and it's comparable to using a blending stomp if you're following on traditionally or one of those um, rubber uh, shapers that they have as well it kind of smears the the pigment on your paper and so I was trying to get kind of a gradiated look there and um, so I wanted a lighter purple next to the darker blue so I was playing around with some of the uh, pencil uh, presets that they have there too and 
uh, they have like a shader and, and several different ones of those. And I was trying to see um, what kind of look I would get with those. And then I was playing around with some of the uh, settings on the blending uh, palette knife there. Just trying to kind of get a look like it's a, a pastel uh, blending on paper. And I'm adding a little bit of some lighter purple here. And then I threw in some orange because I wanted some color there. Um, around the bird and so I was trying to kind of blend those together and <clears throat> that I found out that the tiny frost uh, setting on the palette knife is probably the best to give it a sort of a pastel look so I was going ahead and, and blending that out and if you're following along traditionally and you're doing this you're doing the background you can use pan pastels or some of the square chalk pastels and just kind of rub them on the side and then you can use your, your blending cloth and sometimes I tear up an old t-shirt or I have a, a blending cloth that you can get it actually came in the, the set with the, the rubber shapers and then I wanted to go ahead and add some purples and some blues. So I went ahead and added that around the bird, just kind of like you would do um, if you were working traditionally. But it doesn't exactly work that way in Art Rage. Um, you have to turn off the real color blending for pastels and dry media. Um, otherwise you get this weird red thing that, that's showing up here and it works great if you're using the acrylic paint and the oil paint because you want them to blend sort of like that and look um, <clears throat> like they're, they're really a, a blending with the paint. But when you're working with the pastels, the pastels don't blend like this when you're working traditionally. So you're getting some really weird colors here and that's what was happening to me as I was getting this weird fringe where the purple and the orange were mixing and it was it was trying to make a trying to mix those like you would with paint but this is a chalk pastel so what you have to do is go into your settings and I'll do that here in a minute uh, and you click on your color picker and it has settings and it has real color blending in there and you can go ahead and unclick that and that will take care of this problem but I kept trying to at first I was trying to figure out why it was doing this and then I realized that's what was going on so I, I kept trying to add um, some more orange to it and it just kept blending and making this really weird color around the bird that I didn't want because I wanted kind of a a light blue color and, and orange and purples around him not this garish looking red so I kept using the tiny frost blender and I was trying to go ahead and just blend this all out and then I was going to add sort of a, a lighter uh, color to see if that would work and it just kept adding this weird fringe to it and as I said this is what you want when you're working with your acrylic paint or the oil paints in Art Rage you want them to to kind of mimic real color blending but this is not how dry media works it doesn't blend exactly like that and so if you're working on the traditionally you would blend this with a cloth or a sponge the the sponges come with the pan pastels too and you would be using your pan pastels for this background. And then there I got this really weird color because it's got a yellow component that's mixing with the blue and you get the green and you get a weird yellow green thing going on down there too. So I went ahead and, and merged the layers and then I added a separate layer where the colors wouldn't be blending together and I went ahead and clicked off real color blending. And so you can go ahead and add a separate layer there. And then that will allow you to just kind of blend that color out without having to uh, worry about it mixing with another color. And when you turn real color blending off, it just kind of 
mixes the pixels around, but it's not trying to make a new color. And that's usually the way most digital programs work is they don't have the real color blending, which I really like the real color blending. That's why I like ArtRage because it has that feature, but sometimes you have to turn it off when you're working with the different media. And so this is where it started to mimic um, real traditional pastels much better, where you just kind of, you can just kind of blend them in together along the edges using your rag or a blending stomp or um, the, the rubber shaper tool or a sponge even. And so then I forgot and added the colors, <laughs> added the colors on the layer. So you have to go back and and add and merge that layer down and add a separate layer there if you don't want them to do that. And then here, this is what happens. If you don't save, the program crashed on me and I lost all that work that I'd done. So save frequently. I know I tell everybody to save frequently and I didn't listen to myself and it crashed and I lost all my work and that's what happens. So this is the end of part one. And in part two, I had to redo the whole background, but that's okay because things weren't going the way I wanted it to look anyway. So it was better that I went ahead and restarted it, but that doesn't always happen. Sometimes you've got some really good details and you've got the painting just the way you want it and it crashes. So save, 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 save. <laughs> Don't forget to save. And I forgot to save. And I was sorry, but not as sorry as I could have been. But usually I'm very sorry. So anyway, just remember to say frequently, everybody. <laughs> but if you want to go ahead and see how I restarted the, the background and redid it and got it going the way I wanted to, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And thanks everybody for watching. Thank you so much for your support. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments down below and I will catch you later.